The Tankoff catheter is a tube that's placed into the patient's abdomen and that enables us, us, enables us to run dialysis fluid in and out of the abdomen and that's where the dialysis actually takes place. So it's an essential part of the, um, of the dialysis process. Without the Tankoff catheter, we don't have peritoneal dialysis. The whole aim of peritoneal dialysis is to, for people to be completely independent of the organisation and maintain their own dialysis at home. We started inserting Tankoff catheters at Bendigo Health about two years ago and when we researched the literature we, we looked at um, some guidelines from Canada who are the, the international gurus of peritoneal dialysis and they actually specified some targets that we should be meeting in terms of uh, complications in relation to Tankoff catheter insertion. Um, from our own development of the service, we thought it was important that we monitor those as well. So we adopt, adopted their guidelines in relation to complications. We started off with 14 patients on peritoneal dialysis about two years ago. We're up to 29 now, so we've, had a, we've doubled the number of patients on peritoneal dialysis in this area. They're the all chain. people who have what's known as end-stage kidney disease. So without dialysis, they wouldn't survive, essentially. Some, some were having haemodialysis and coming into the hospital every two days. Some were people that were known to the physicians or through the outpatient system that their kidneys were failing but uh, hadn't to the extent of needing dialysis at the time. So a lot of these people have been monitored for many years in some cases prior to actually needing, needing dialysis. Haemodialysis is essentially an in-hospital treatment. Um, that patients are required to come in three times a week for and they might be connected to the machine for four to five hours, three times a week. It can be fairly limiting in someone's lifestyle and travel opportunities are, um, are restricted somewhat because of the demand on dialysis services in other hospitals in other settings. The peritoneal dialysis really differs because patients are looking after it in their own home by themselves and can adopt the flexibility as much as possible. Some people that have started on haemodialysis have opted to go to peritoneal dialysis for that flexibility. One of the options that's available is an overnight peritoneal dialysis machine, which leaves patients days free to live their life whichever way they want, connect to the dialysis machine overnight and the procedure is actually performed while they sleep. One of the biggest advantages for, for those people is they don't have to travel to Melbourne for any of the training. Um, any of the surgery related to peritoneal dialysis as well. So it's a service that's run locally for people from, at the moment we stretch our service from Wood End to Witchy Proof to Sea Lake and to Tokenwall. So it's a, a fair area that we cover. The patients go through a series of assessments before they actually start peritoneal dialysis. Um, cognitive assessments and physical assessments to see that they have the skills necessarily, necessary to do the treatment at home. The, um, we haven't excluded anyone on the basis of those assessments. We use those to develop up training plans that will meet their needs so that when they go home they're fully trained and able to undertake all the procedures at home by themselves. The peritoneal dialysis staff do face-to-face -face monitoring with the patients. We monitor them initially the day post-operatively before they go home. Then there are weekly visits until we train the patients to look after the, the catheter itself. Um, routinely after that there is a visit every six months from the peritoneal dialysis staff or more frequently as needed by the patients. And there are some patients that we lose because they're so independent that we can't keep track of them. <laughs> That's a win because it shows that people are adapting to peritoneal dialysis and incorporating it into their lifestyle and being as flexible as they want. Um, I say lost, we lost an 83 year old gentleman because he decided to go to Queensland for a month with his peritoneal dialysis and his wife. And that's what we want from peritoneal dialysis. The training is, is going really well. Um, the patients are all independent of, of the staff. Most of our work is done over the telephone. Occasionally uh, patients will come in for a routine procedure, but most of the monitoring, the long term monitoring is done in their home in conjunction with the patients. The big thing that we monitor for and aim to prevent is infection. If there's an infection around the catheter, that needs to be treated promptly and quickly. So that's one of the areas that we monitor. Uh, another area of monitoring is an infection inside the, the abdomen, known as peritonitis. Again, can be a painful for the patient and can 
limit how well peritoneal dialysis actually works if that occurs. The other main points of monitoring are in relation to the surgical procedure itself. Um, with any surgery there is a risk associated with it. The two that we monitor here are problems associated with hemorrhaging or bleeding and the other one is in relation to perforation of the, of the bowel. The best thing is that we haven't had any of those more serious surgical related complications happen. I think we've had one or two episodes of slight infection around the catheter itself. Um, but as I said before, we've, we've beat the international guidelines. The machine, it's, if I go into the company spiel, the machine weighs 15 and a half kilograms. It's about 60 centimetres long, about 15 centimetres high and about 20 centimetres deep. So it's, uh, it's not a lot bigger than a desktop computer. Um, there are supplies that need to go with that to actually run the dialysis, but the machine itself is reasonably compact. Sizing is, is an advantage because it is quite portable and the machines that we use are very robust and they travel very well. You can put them in the boot of the car, get them out at the other end and be quite confident that they're going to work the way they should. They also allow us a lot of um, programming options to actually tailor people's dialysis specifically for them based on how well the dialysis is working. The beauty about peritoneal dialysis is its simplicity. Apart from, if you're not using the overnight machine, there is no machinery involved at all. Um, the procedures are very simple and very easy to learn. The, um, even the overnight machine, you need very little equipment to support that, essentially just a PowerPoint. So wherever there's a PowerPoint, you can use the overnight, dial the overnight peritoneal dialysis machine. We've had a lot of uh, informal feedback from, from patients in relation to the support and the training that we've been able to, to provide. Um, which has been terrific. It would be another improvement we'd like to make would be to formalise that feedback more. I like to think that people are always honest with us and appreciate what we do but sometimes it's not until you, you get um, some impartial feedback that you spot other areas for improvement so that would be something that I'd be keen to implement in the next six or twelve months. The main outcome is that the service can be delivered locally and monitored professionally locally. Um, we didn't have the service prior to two years ago, so we're really looking at uh, maintaining uh, good monitoring and good outcomes for the patients. The results that we've shown have, um, have exceeded the guidelines recommended by the uh, International Society for Peritoneal Dialysis, which is something we're really proud of and something we're really keen to, to maintain.